first of all, I just want to thank the friends of Goodwin Park because we, we know that without the friends, uh, we cannot get that critical mass that's really engaged, a uh, group that's composed of uh, just people who adore the park as well as neighbors. Um, this, as many others, are beautiful parks that we have the good fortune of having those that predated us uh, give as a gift to the city. We know that we have many, many parks in our city. We know that for decades, many of our parks underwent either neglect or the resources weren't there to make sure that we kept these parks in optimal position. So when we get an opportunity to celebrate uh, the rescuing of our parks, it is, it, is a, it is a good thing. So one year ago, approximately two years ago, two years ago, I visited here and the pond house was in very, very bad condition. Um, this not only serves as the meeting place for the friends meeting, but it's also the place where we engage our children and our community into many different activities. And we get to have partnerships with Camp Kern. We get to have partnerships with Knox. We get to have partnerships with other groups. This is a meeting place, but it's also a place of celebration. I know that my DPW staff um, and Mr. Mata always run away from me when I come to <laughs> one of these events because as I see something new come to fruition, it only points out those other areas that need a little bit of attention. So we've been working for over a year now, or more, to try to address the pond or the water features and water structures within our parks. Um, it's, it's always a challenge to make sure that, that the water quality, that the filtration systems are up to date. A lot of these ponds at one point were fed by different streams uh, running in and out of them. Unfortunately, those water streams were removed in many cases in order to do flood control. So the problem now is that you have some stagnant water, you get the eutrophication that you see that needs to be remedied. And we're not, uh, we're currently in a, in a study in that. Uh, and we have some plans. Um, all we need to do is make sure that we keep the resources uh, rolling in. Um, we've, we've, we've increased, even in, in spite of difficult times, we've increased, we've tripled the amount of dollars that have gone into our parks, at least since the time that I've been there, it's been tripled. These parks, you know, for many of our community, many of the children, many of the families in our community, the pool here and the facilities here, this is, this is their summer vacation. They don't have the resources. And a lot of the folks that come here are taxpayers who oftentimes, in order to be able to meet their mortgage obligations, their tax obligations, and feed their families, have to forego an annual vacation. So we have to turn this not into a good park, we have to turn this into a great and excellent park. So again, I want to thank you all uh, for all the effort that you've put. Please keep on advocating for the parks. Do not hesitate. Look, I get beat up all the time for not doing this or doing that. It, it sparks activity. The only thing I do want to say as we go through the dilemma of dealing with our golf courses and, and trying to get our facilities up in, in, into, into, in, in good shape is that we are doing more than we've ever done. But the neglect and the period of inattention was very big and we're not going to remedy, we're not going to remedy it in one year. So as we fix things, and those things that have not been done just become more apparent. But it's not a reason for us to turn our back. It's a reason to get more support. I was telling them maybe we can get the state involved. The state took over the pond at, at, uh, at uh, Kitty Park. And that, that pond now is basically getting the resources from the state because it is a, it is a refuge uh, to our migratory birds. It's a refuge, same, same as this here. Um, you got a lot of geese and a lot of different herons and things that make their way through here. So, so it's important not only for recreation, but it's important to educate our kids. And, and that part has a very big educational component to the park infrastructure. So um, I want to acknowledge um, uh, our state representative, uh, uh, Edwin, um, uh, for being here. Adios, Edwin. Edwin Vargas, oh my God. Today is like one of those days where I'm like, 
I've only known him for 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> um, uh, because we do need to understand, and, and I need your help in making our state partners understand that Hartford parks are just not Hartford parks. That these parks, whether it's River, Riverside Park, whether it's this park, whether it's Bushnell Park, we service a community that's much broader than Hartford. So in essence, it's the capital city system of parks. And we accommodate a lot of the state traffic in terms of the needs and a lot of the, the natural resources for the state, whether it's replenishing our aquifers or our, our bird life or our wildlife. I mean, this is important. So I plan to recruit more assistance from the state because we're a capital city. People come from 164, 165 towns. They come here to look at our, at our capital. So they look at Bushnell Park here. Uh, so we need, we need to enlist all our partners in, in doing more. So um, I want to congratulate some folks here. I just want to give some project data. BRD Builders LLC was the construction uh, company that was awarded the contract. We signed that contract back about about a year and a half ago, April uh, 2012. And the work just doesn't include this building, but it also includes the walkways, the parking lots, uh, some of the site drainage. If you see around, we have um, some uh, drainage uh, improvements that have been done in the pot house. It's been completely, completely done. Uh, the interior, uh, the walls, the heaters, uh, uh, HVAC, the plumbing, uh, all, all, all the bathrooms, and a security system. Um, we need to secure a park. Uh, once we fix and make the investment, then it's the challenge of how are we going to protect it. Uh, just last week, I, I enlisted Knox Parks to cover up all the graffiti along our highways because it doesn't give a good impression when you have all that graffiti. They took it down Monday. I just drove by there today, and not only is the graffiti back up again, they did a double decker. It's up on the top and down below. So it's a challenge. Um, now the challenge is to get it off as quickly as possible. It's sort of like a, like a war against graffiti, but hopefully we just can't uh, let it accumulate. We have to take it back down. And also the facility is ADA compliant. As our population grows older, it's important that anything that we do and anything that we build is ADA compliant, but also ADA friendly. We need to go beyond compliance and make sure that it's an inviting place for our seniors and anybody, anyone that has physical uh, disabilities. The design firm is Rodriguez and Associates, architects and planners. They're here and are represented here. Uh, the funding came from the Hartford Parks Trust Fund, $450,000. Uh, the construction cost on its own was 343 uh, with the design fees and miscellaneous fees, um, we, we expended um, over about a half a million dollars uh, in this facility. Worth, worth, worth the investment. So I want to thank all of you. It's a day to celebrate. Um, and we need to just continue to love our parks and do more. So thank you so much. Here. We got the architects here. We have the partners from Camp Karen here. We have our state rep here. Kids Channel kids. 3. <laughs> Channel 3. Kids Camp. I'm sorry. Okay. Someone did that at the, the, the other way around, and we thought we were going to get shot on the set. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, um, and, um, and we have the men who I abuse incredibly, and that's Tony Mata. Thank you so much. And this gentleman in right here who got an award just yesterday, Andy Hart. A one man show who covers everything good that is happening in this city. If we can have that happen across the board, my God, our, our, the perspective of our city and the whole, the whole dynamic will really change. So thank you, Andy. And everyone else, thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of the Friends of Goodwin Park, to show our appreciation for your commitment to the parks, uh, and especially to your, for your commitment to Goodwin Park, we'd like to present you with this t-shirt. Well, Hope you, you wear it with a lot of pride. Thank you. Uh, and I'd also just like to mention a few other things that people might not be aware of that have happened in the park. Uh, the city has installed a new ADA compliant fitness circuit up at the uh, Maple Avenue entrance to the park. And I want to point out that there are eight new picnic tables in the park. These were built by uh, uh, 
Raul Castro, who now has joined the service, but he graduated from high school this past June, earned his Eagle Scout badge by building these tables. And uh, the city staff helped place them and anchor them so that they're protected. Uh, and before we even got them sealed with uh, and stained, there were people sitting down having picnics. So they're a welcome resource to our park. So again, Mayor, I want to thank you, and I want to thank everyone for being here. There's refreshments inside. Please come in and enjoy them. Thank you.